With 400 years of history, the United States has gone through countless historical events. From the colonial settlement in the 1600s to American Revolution, to Civil War, to Great Depression and World War II in the 1900s. After the war, the country has gone through numerous events, good and bad, to become one of the powerful and influential countries in the world. Among the numerous achievements and disasters, what will be considered the most historical events to the American public? According to the survey by PEW Research Center, conducted among U.S. adults in 2016, the most memorable and devastating event in the U.S. history to the U.S. public was the September 11 attack. Yet, the dreadful memory stood on the top of all the historical events that the U.S. went through. So, what this dreadful event that happened around 20 years ago. On September 11, 2001, 19 militants associated with the Islamic ex ex extremist group Al Qaeda. They hijacked four airplanes and carried out suicide attacks against targets in the United States. Almost 3,000 people were killed during the 911 terrorist attacks, which triggered major U.S. initiatives to combat terrorism. To know what happened more precisely, I interviewed my dad, who saw the situations. Could you share your experience on September 11, 2001? Sure. At the time, I was working as a lawyer at a downtown law firm in Manhattan. Um, on that day, I had I was already at work when my partner, that's how we refer to senior attorneys at our law firm, um, called me into his office. He said he was he saw paper debris flying in the air and he was worried about what had happened. So he was going to call his friend who was working at World Trade Center. And that's when I saw a loud noise out the window. Uh, we saw, my partner and I, we saw a plane fly by our building and collide into the World Trade Center. Uh, and on the TV, most TV would show from the other direction, the plane going into the building, we saw from the other side. How did you feel about that? We were shocked. Um, later on, we found out it, were, it was due to the terrorist act that caused the, uh, or that was the source, uh, cause of this uh, terrible uh, incident. But at the time, we suspected it was some sort of a, uh, error uh, at the airport control or you know, an error due to the pilot uh, problem. We didn't suspect this was a terrorist act, and we were very surprised, we were shocked, um, and we were actually very concerned about our safety. And uh, that's when my partner told me to stop working and then go back home. How did you react? So when my partner told me to go home, um, I exited our office building, and I saw people walking in large groups towards midtown Manhattan. Uh, as I mentioned, our offices were in downtown Manhattan, so uh, we felt that, um, you know, I, I felt that it would be safe to move where other people were heading. So I saw many people walk towards midtown Manhattan, so I followed them. And after I walked a few blocks, that's when the second plane, the World Trade Center, uh, and 
I did not get to see the building collapse right away, uh, but I started to continue to walk towards Midtown Manhattan. Here's how the situation started. Four planes were hijacked on September 11. At 7.59 a.m., the first plane, American Airlines Flight 11, took off from Boston bound for Los Angeles. There were six, uh, 76 passengers, 11 crew members, and 5 hijackers on the board. At 8.15 a.m., the second plane, United Airlines Flight 175, took off from the Boston bound for Los Angeles too. There were 51 passengers, 9 crew members, 5 hijackers on the board. At 8.20 a.m., the third plane, American Airlines Flight 77, took off from the Washington Dulles International Airport bound for Los Angeles. There were 53 passengers, 6 crew members and 5 executives on the board. At 8.42 a.m., the fourth plane, United Airlines Flight 93, took off from the Newark International Airport bound for San Francisco. There were 33 passengers, 7 crew members, and 4 hijackers on the board. At 8.46 a.m., the first plane, American Airlines Flight 11, crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in the New York City. First, it wasn't sure whether it is an accident or terrorist attack. About 15 minutes later, at 9.30 a.m., the second plane, United Airlines Flight 175, crashes into the South Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. Now, it was clear that the plane crashes are now accident, but a terrorist attack. At 9.30 a.m., President George W. Bush delivers his first remarks on the attacks while visiting Emma Brooker Elementary School in Florida. At 9.37 a.m., the third plane, American Airlines Flight 77, crashes into the Pentagon, the Department of Defense in Washington, D.C. 125 service members and civilians were killed, as were the 59 passengers on the plane. Many others were injured. At 10.3 a.m., the fourth plane, United Airlines Flight 93, crashes into the field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The passengers and crew knew their plane was part of a larger terrorist attack, and a few of them tried to break into the cockpit where the hijackers locked themselves. In the fear that the passengers will break into the cockpit, they crashed the plane before reaching the targeted destinations. Flight 93's intended target is not definitely known, but it is believed that the hijackers were targeting the White House. In fear that passengers will break into the cockpit, they crashed the plane before reaching the targeted destinations. Osama bin Laden, 
a Saudi Arabian terrorist who formed Al Qaeda terrorist organizations to finance these terrorist acts, was behind the 9/11 attack. According to his interview with CNN, he mentioned they are acting in relations for America's support of Israel, its involvement in the Persian Gulf War, and its continued military presence in the Middle East. At 9 p.m., President George W. Bush delivered a televised address from the Oval Office, announcing America will stand still and declare war against terrorism. On October 7, Operation Enduring Freedom, the American-led international effort to drive out the Taliban regime in Afghanistan and destroy Osama bin Laden's terrorist network, base there began. Within two months, U.S. forces had effectively removed the Taliban from operational power, but the war continued. As U.S. and coalition forces attempt to defeat a Taliban insurgency campaign based in neighboring Pakistan. After 10 years of long chasing Osama bin Laden, the mastermind behind the September 11th attacks, was finally tracked down and killed by U.S. forces at a hideout in Abu Tabat, Pakistan. Hit on New York, which is the center of the finance, obviously had an immediately negative effects on the U.S. economy. Many Wall Street institutions, including the New York Stock Exchange, were evacuated during the attacks. On the first day of trading after the attacks, the market fell 7.1%. When the stock market fell 7.1% on the first day of trading after the attacks, New York City's economy alone lost 143,000 jobs a month and $2.8 billion in wages in the first three months. The heaviest losses were in finance and air transportation, which accounted for 60% of lost jobs. The estimated cost of Wall Street Center damages $60 billion. The cost to clean the debris at Ground Zero was $750 million. The attack resulted in high damage costs including the $60 billion in the damage costs of the Wall Street Center and the $750 million cleanup cost of the Ground Zero. And those were the image when they were the cleaning the Ground Zero. New York has reserved the space where the two World Trade Center buildings once stood and made it a pal place of remembrance and mourning. Ground Zero is no longer an empty pit. New York is demonstrating its strength and recovery with new buildings erected on the site, including the National 911 Memorial, the 911 Memorial Museum, and the new One World Trade Center. New Oculus train station has this shape of a wing like a phoenix rising from the ashes. The United States of America will always rise again. <laughs>